am rolling now. Me too. I have turned on my mic. Ah, that's important. So hopefully this will all work. One, two, three. That will get twinkle. Stop it! If Good Dinosaur is Pixar's first failure, why is it? <laughs> you want to know why? Is it because we've had two Pixar movies this year? Is it because of when it came out? Is it because the ad campaign sucked? Is it because word of mouth was bad? Or critics? Or I was, was going to say, it's because John Ratzenberger didn't have a part in it. But apparently he, he did. did. He was the last credit, in the, in the, and they he said what his name was. Earl. They said Earl, I and I, I can't remember who Earl was. I don't know who Earl was either. <laughs> Maybe he's one of the little critters on that guy's head. That guy, apparently that I was trying to say, that I said I recognize his voice, and he must be just Peter Sohn, director of the movie. Oh, really? Interesting. So. Yeah, Jeffrey Wright was the father, and I didn't recognize that at all. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I, I, Anna Paquin was one of those critter varmints, those yeah. wrestlers. And I was like, huh. Well, yeah. Oh, you know what? That's what John Ratzenberger is. He was like the fourth one of those wrestlers. Oh, okay. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the only, like, really showy voice actor was Sam Elliott, and who knows, who even remembers who Sam Elliott is anymore. Right. Um, I mean, that's never been Pixar's thing. No, it's, that you know, hasn't ever mattered. Craig T. Nelson. Nelson. In. In. You know, you're not going to get that. And, I, you know, I thought the voice acting was, was fine. Yeah. The one that did Arlo was great, and uh, the little spot voice was fine and all that. It just, uh, there was something that's been in most of the Pixar movies that wasn't in this. And I, I, I guess it's magic. I don't know. There was something transcendent about most of those Pixar movies. Where it's like, yeah, a kid can enjoy it, but an, a grown-up can enjoy it more. And, you know, any mother off the street would disagree vehemently with this, with what I just said. They'd be like, what are you talking about? Fuck you. Toy Story was made for little kids. <laughs> Billy, go to your room. You're not to play with him anymore. But they're wrong. Adults made these movies. Kids did not make these movies. Adults made them so that they would resonate with adults, other with their peers. And that's why those movies got Oscars. That's why those movies are still beloved a generation later, is because... There was something more than trying to be a babysitter to entertain a kid for two hours. And there, it had a moral, like you said, and it had a lesson that every kid needs to learn and all yeah, that. But it, it didn't have the magic. It didn't have that. Yeah, there's definitely that. So the heart, I think, that we've talked a lot about that Pixar tends to have just seemed to be missing. I, and I, see, I feel like it showed up at the end. A little and bit. And I, I, you know, I was moved and I was sorry to see Spot go and all that, but you had to let him go. And, and I think that that would speak to a child. But like the other day, the kids were watching Cars. And I think almost everyone would agree that Cars is one of the lesser Pixar movies. But I paused while the kids were watching it and I started to watch it. And I was like, holy cow, this is really strong. I was I was tempted to just go sit down and watch it with them because there was something going on, something that spoke to me. And then, of course, Larry the Cable Guy starts talking. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's why nobody likes cars. You're right, guys. <laughs> I was wrong. I admit it. But, yeah, there, there were scenes with Paul Newman uh, talking to uh, Lightning McQueen and all that where I was just like, oh, holy cow, there's something emotionally arresting about this. Wow. And, uh, yeah, most of the time it wasn't there in Good Dinosaur. And is that because of replacing Bob Peterson? Or was Bob Peterson's vision even more? Even worse? Yeah, and, and I, I don't think we'll ever know. Uh, I just hope Bob Peterson was telling a story about dinosaurs in the present day. Because that's what I expected, dang it. There is a possibility. I, I remember when they were first talking about Good Dinosaur, that was the premise. What if dinosaurs had never gone extinct? And I, I want to say that Bob Peterson said, talked about it as a boy in his days. Yeah, the, the title for the movie didn't really work. But this was much more of a dinosaur and his boy, although it still was just like a coming-of-age story for a really badly designed dinosaur. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, The Good Dinosaur 
what is that? Where does that? That has to be yeah. a remnant From of the, the original vision of this movie. Because what what's good about him? Why is he the good dinosaur? And are there all the rest bad? I don't know. I, they yeah, sure you see the logo. See it. it says the, and it's underlined good dinosaur. And I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't work for whatever they had there. Maybe that was an important part later when the dinosaurs didn't all go extinct and they were all bad guys, except for this one. Look, this is the good dinosaur. I don't know, but it, it didn't work for this show. Yeah, and it's not to say that the movie was a failure. I mean, if it, many great movies have not made a tremendous amount of money. But for it to be the first Pixar movie that doesn't make its money back, and, and you say it's in danger of doing that. Right? Well, I just saw headlines as I was going to look up cast and crew. Well, when it first came out, people were saying, oh, that's kind of a disappointing opening. For Pixar, for, you, for, for a regular movie, everybody would be thrilled. But then a, a few days later, people were saying, you know, it's actually opened about the same as Penguins and Madagascar. And to me, that's just holy crap. Because Penguins and Madagascar <laughs> is the lowest rung on the ladder. It's like, oh, geez, really? That the showed Penguins... up on Netflix just recently. Well, and that's fine if you guys and like now it. now I've sadly seen it. Oh, my gosh, it's awful. The type of humor in Penguins of Madagascar is is not my kind of humor. And I just, uh, I hate to say it, but yeah, lowest common denominator thing. And so, yeah, if a Pixar movie opened, uh, you know, around the same as Penguins of Madagascar, oh, geez, that's just disappointing. It's been out long enough that, you know, we should see if it has legs or not. And just now you read that up about uh, headline. Yeah, I just so. saw the headline. I was searching, and that was just some of the ones that came up. Let me go to the actual box office mojo and see. Seventy-five million is where it's at, which is respectable for another movie, but I'm sure this thing costs two hundred. Yeah, and considering that they had to put it back and give it another year and a half. It probably cost even more than it should have. So the fact that it cost extra and is doing worse says it's only the second Pixar film to drop more than 60% in its second weekend. Mm, okay, well, it's it's dropping then, and that's, that's too bad. I mean, hopefully we, we can rest assured that uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks 4 will do worse, but... Why you said that you you already knew why it was it not doing well? Oh, I was just gonna say it was because they didn't have John Ratzenberger, but apparently they did, so I was wrong. Uh, They've said before that John Ratzenberger is like their lucky, lucky charm. Yeah. And they put him in all their movies, and all their movies do well. But I guess uh, his luck must be wearing off. Sooner or later, they're gonna not put John Ratzenberger in one. But, uh, I don't know, there's other things that they've done, like they put the Pizza Planet truck in, like, every movie for a long time, and I don't know if they finally stopped doing that. I would assume it wasn't in The Good Dinosaur, because that would be weird, but maybe it was way, way off in the background, so you didn't see it, you didn't realize it was there. Well, yeah, you'd think that they would have abandoned that by right now. I mean, I could see the Pizza Planet truck in Wally trash and things like that but yeah it's where was it in uh in inside out somewhere inside of her head well that had scenes yeah, that took place in the life. real world so you'd have it drive by but uh yeah i mean i don't know i maybe everybody who you know saw the commercials felt the same way as as us and just said yeah that doesn't look very good doesn't look like my kind of thing Oh, hey, folks. Uh, let me interrupt you just for a minute. Obviously, you know what you've been experiencing, but there are forces beyond our control that want us to stop <laughs> podcasting. Have you noticed that, Big? <laughs> I have noticed that. Yeah, I wanted to say that 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 sound, the the whatever that sound is that's going over the top of our audio at a point here about a minute or two in, later in the recording, it sounds like a demon is trying to escape from hell by way of our recording. So you know, I'm just thinking that maybe uh, there are forces beyond our control trying to stop us. Because 
It seems like it's every single time we try and record now, there's some kind of issue. It is, yeah. The next time we got together to record, we lost, what, an hour? An yep. hour or more of recording? Yep. Uh, and so uh, I just thought maybe we should just get on here and sort of reiterate with hopefully better audio what we're saying in this this moment when it gets the worst. I mean, th th there comes a point where it just sounds like somebody chewing on tinfoil whenever we <laughs> talk. And you can hear that way louder than what we're saying. So we'll just jump in here, sort of reiterate the the gist of our conversation. And then we'll go away and you can enjoy the end of the original recording with, you know, the snap, crackle, and pop. <laughs> Your breakfast cereal. All right. Maybe I'll see it in the dollar movies. Maybe I'll see it in the dollar movies. Maybe we'll just watch the Minions or whichever. <laughs> Have you seen the Minions movie? No. I I want you to call me. I don't care how early in the morning it is. I want you to call me, wake me up, and tell me what you think. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I remember way back when, back when the podcast first started, I think this was way before That Gets My Goat even started, just part of the regular old show, and we did a review after we had gone to see Wally. And we were talking about how amazing it was to be in a golden age, right in the middle of a golden age. You know, they talk about, like, the golden age of Disney. It was, you know, back in the 30s and the 40s and stuff when Walt first started making feature films and all the great things that they made. And then there was the, what would you call it, another golden age or the silver age or... Bronze Age, I don't know, when when they made Little Mermaid. And... Oh, you know, they call that the Disney Renaissance. Oh, okay. The Disney Renaissance. You know, you have these different kind of times when things are just so great. And often you just don't think about it when you're in the middle of it. You don't stop and say, wow, I'm witnessing amazing stuff. And it's not going to be around forever. It's like all the sports fans that used to sit and watch Michael Jordan play basketball. And they were right there on the seats in the arena, and they were watching him right in front of him do this stuff live, and they were saying, wow, this guy's doing this stuff right in front of me. This is some kind of a golden age, something that, that I'm going to remember my whole life. I got to see the greatest player that ever lived. And eventually he retired, and that went away. And all those people that got to see Wayne Gretzky playing hockey, you know, you could sit there in, in the frozen arena and, and watch the great one do the things that he did. You know, this guy's the best there ever was. And you only get to see it for a certain time. And we talked about that when Wally came out. And we were talking about how great it was to be in a golden age, to be in the golden age of Pixar. And eventually it was going to come to an end. And so every time I go to see a Pixar movie, I'm just worried, you know, every time they put out something that's, you know, slightly not as awesome, I'm just like, oh no, we've made it, we're here to the end of that golden age, it's over. And then something else comes out, you know, Inside Out comes out, which is pretty good, and I'm thinking, oh, maybe, maybe it's not the end just yet. And, uh, yeah, and so, I don't know, after seeing this one, though, I, I almost feel like maybe we've made it there. Maybe we're at the end of the golden age of Pixar. So you look at what's in store for you. Like one of the trailers we saw today was the trailer for Finding Dory. The movie you never knew you wanted to see. And you talked about it. You said that all, all they got to do is play the music. And we hear that and we're just like, oh, 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 oh man, we're in. Because the... Because the music is so good. It's it's amazing stuff. And But the, the, the thing is that, you know, they played the music for the Star Wars prequels uh, in their trailers. And we were just like, oh, 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 oh I'm so in. But, yeah, you know, I mean, kind of wish that we weren't in for those. And I fear now every single time, <laughs> instead of being excited about a new Pixar movie, I'm I'm just worried about it. And it bums me out. You know, I mean, something like this comes out and I think, ah, oh, shoot, you know, maybe we're at the, the end of that golden age. I mean, I mean it, it was a good movie. It was, it was better than 
a lot of the other stuff that is out there. So yeah, I mean like Norm of the North is not going to be anywhere near as good as this was, but but still this this was a long cliff of a drop off from things like Wally -E and Toy Story and Up and Monsters Incorporated and Finding Nemo, you know, those are the top of the mountain and this one is down in the foothills. It seems like the golden age that we're going through now is the Disney uh, computer animated uh, golden age. D Disney Studio itself, you know, with, uh, you know, Wreck-It Ralph and, and Frozen and like Big, uh, Hero, Big Six. Hero 6. You know, I, I don't know if I like Big Hero 6 as much as those other two, but it was still, it was, it was pretty good. Tangled? Oh, right, right. Tangled too. You know, um, the other day I, I saw uh, Frozen Fever. Do you know what that is? That's the uh, the short that came with the DVD afterwards or whatever, right? Yeah, so you, so you have seen it? I have, yeah. Well, there's this line where uh, Elsa says, all of Anna's previous birthdays were spent with her standing in front of the, my locked bedroom door. And I was just like, holy crap, I forgot about that. That's just, I really, for years she was standing... That's such horseshit. Derailed you there. I just, I was just so horrified by that line. It's like, why would you remind the audience of that? But yes, my point was people really, really love Frozen. <laughs> uh, anyway, continue with what you were saying there. I really, really like Wreck-It Ralph. Frozen was good, but I was more inclined to this kind of stuff that Wreck-It Ralph had. Tangled was really good. Big Hero 6 was good. I guess we'll see about this Zootopia one that's uh, to come, but, but I mean the trailer, uh, I mean that was damn hilarious. So you know, <sighs> good dinosaur I'm sure is better than the Secret Lives of Pets and the other ones. Yeah. Which was the one that said from the makers of Minions? I think that was the Pets one. Oh no no they didn't say Minions they said uh, Despicable Me. Oh, right. We also saw the trailer for. Uh, Kung Fu Panda 3. And gosh, the animation was good, but there was nothing uh, in that trailer. It was just like, yeah, I don't ever need to see that. Right. I mean, it's fine. I know people really like those, but I wasn't a fan of the other Kung Fu Panda. They didn't speak to me in the way that, uh, well, that the Pixar movies do, but okay. So uh, part of it is, oh, I hate pandas. F them all. I mean, luckily, soon. They'll all be gone, and that's good. <laughs> but uh, also Jack Black, his humor just doesn't do anything for me. I, it's like you with Zach Galifianakis. Do you remember you used to say things like, why does that guy even exist? <laughs> Whereas uh, Jack Black, he was funny once. I remember he was really funny on a Saturday Night Live sketch once, but uh, then that grew tiresome. You know, I, I realized it was the same joke. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's always the same joke. Right. Well, there's stuff to come. Uh, Finding Dory is the next one. Is that the only one we get next year? I, th I think so. Um, hey, wait, sorry. Let, let me go back. Um, I think someday in the future, people will look back and say that we were in the golden age of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay, yeah, we're definitely in that. And see, I feel like, yeah, that's, that's already passed. But that's just me. I feel like the last two films were underwhelming. But just like Inside Out, people loved it. People lerved Inside Out. And I, I found that there were people that felt that way about Ant-Man. And I didn't. I mean, I just thought it was okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of people, I think, that would still say, uh, you know, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Haven't you run into people that just loved Inside Out? I've just heard so many people sing that Bing Bong song. Oh, okay. Like, oh my gosh, the Bing Bong song. And they're like beating off as they're singing it. And I'd be like, dude, you realize you're in a mall right now? The Disney store? I mean, look, yeah, if it were the Victoria's Secret, I guess that could be understandable. But dude. Um, I... I... <laughs> I don't know if I've come across the people that like Inside Out that much, but uh, yeah, it's hard to say with that. 
You know, the thing with the Marvel Studios is, uh, you know, I've heard people arguing again and again, you know, every time a one bad comic book movie comes out, doesn't do well, they're like, oh, it's now it's the end of comic book movies. Yeah, it's over. But the thing is that they're not going to go away, the comic book movies, because Marvel Studios only makes comic book movies. They have like four in production and, you know, one stage of production or another at all times. So if one of them sucks, well, there's another one six months later. And if that one, well, there's still another one six months later. And it's going to take a long time of them sucking and not doing well before they finally die off. And, you know, I think it's the same thing with Pixar. You know, they're not all going to be hits. Uh, Iron Man 3 was underwhelming, but Captain America 2, Winter Soldier, was awesome right after that. And so, you know, they're not all going to be the greatest ever, but they're going to keep coming. Hit after hit after hit after hit after hit after hit after hit. 98.7. <laughs> what, 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 what was that? Uh, why, why is there a pop song playing right now? You should at least announce what the next song is going to be. <laughs> but yeah, they're, uh, they're going to do You know, they're just going to keep coming. Pixar's going to keep coming, and they're going to have hits and misses, I think, now. The golden age maybe is when they are all, all great, or maybe you have a bunch of great ones grouped really close together. I mean, people talk about that golden age of Disney, or the, the Disney Renaissance, where there was the Little Mermaid, and there was Beauty and the Beast, and there was Aladdin, but you know what? There was also the Rescuers Down Under, right <laughs> in the middle of that. Nobody ever talks about Rescuers and Down nobody Under. nobody mentions Rescuers Down Under, because why would you? It was a sequel? Like, really? There was a sequel? And, yeah, it just, it, it was not good. A sequel about a gigantic eagle. There was a gigantic eagle, yes. And yet that there was mice that were detectives, or rescuers, I guess, is what they were, not so much detectives. It just was all right. But yeah, people just forget that there was that miss in the middle of the hit after hit after hit. And, you know, I think the same thing will probably happen with other things, like Pixar. You know, you had, Pixar had an unblemished run for a long time. But at a certain point, they started going, okay, well, you know, we didn't really like Cars that much. Cars is probably one of the lesser ones. Oh, Ratatouille, I was, I guess if you really like cooking or something, maybe that's cool, but it doesn't really do it for me. So, you know, I think some of those will be forgotten in the list, but when you have enough great ones all bunched together, you know, you'll forget those other ones if that would be so yeah, is the golden age still on? I don't know. Well, I, I would hope, because we've got more than a dozen episodes where we talk about Pixar coming down the pipe. But yeah, I, I have my hopes up still. I still hope that I'll, I will love the movies as they come. You know, every time a movie underperforms at the box office like that, we've and this is something we always talk about, Hollywood's going to be more skittish about mo making movies like that. So yeah, Good Dinosaur underperforms. They say, well, okay, well, then we'll do Toy Story 4 and Cars 3 and The Incredibles 2 and Finding Nemo 2. And that way we're guaranteed. We're not going to take another risk like we did with that dinosaur movie. We had photo real plants in that movie, along with a, a, a dinosaur that looked like it had been made by stop motion clay <laughs> animation. From the 1930s. So. <laughs> Gosh, those, that scenery was just so amazing. I, uh, blew me away the whole time I was watching I was like jeez look at this and then he's like ah oh, the dinosaur get out of the way I'm trying to look at the scenery they even had cloud that what was it <laughs> called the cloud monger or something like that they had some special there were, this this title yeah that team. was that was just there was an a guy who was and I don't want to say cloud wrangler but it was like cloud like cloud vortex coordinator yeah or something, or something like that and then they, yeah his whole team they just, they just made clouds. But the clouds sure looked good. <laughs> they spent as much on clouds as Norm of the North did on Norm. And the North. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
I think that's probably all we need to say, unless, unless we want to make fun of the design a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, no, I think we're good. I think I've said my piece. Okay. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rajal Fields. And, uh, make your mark. No, I, I take that back. Edit that out, announcer man. I, wait, announcer man? Announcer man, edit now? Does I don't know. know. I can't remember. It's been a long time. I guess that has to stay in. I'm sorry that I ended on such a weak note, guys. Uh, just please forgive me. Good night. See ya. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 attribution, no derivatives, share alike license. That means you can't sell it, but you can share it with everybody. It also means you have too much time on your hands. Yeah, you're talking about Jack Black, and hopefully pandas soon will all be gone. <laughs> yeah, oh, I can't wait. I fudge and hate pandas. <laughs>